All right, welcome back. Now, at the end of the intro, we mentioned that there were uh, functional changes to the media tab in, in addition to all of the look and feel stuff. So let's dive in there and start with that. However, the media tab is right above where my head always sits. So I'm going to need slide center stage so we can get a better look over here. And essentially what the enhancements to the media tab uh, amount to are some sorting and organization improvements, uh, the ability to set our own iconography or our own images for the VST stuff, um, a lot more drag and drop capability, both with the uh, presets, with the instruments, with the effects, and the dra and new drag and drop capability out of the audio previewer. So let's jump in and look at the uh, open the VST effects tile first. And what you'll see here is a list of all of the categories of effects, so delay and reverb and so forth. If you drop down this menu, you now have the ability to sort that by vendor. And depending on how your rig is set up, that may or may not be a more efficient way to get around. Um, it can certainly help you if you're looking, if you know I'm looking for a specific isotope plugin, I can switch to the vendor view and then I can pop open all my isotope stuff in one shot. Um, and if we open them all up here, you'll notice that we have uh, icons for each of those different effects, but they're, they're blank. We'll get into why that is in just a second. But if you would prefer to just see the names, you can turn off uh, the plug-in picture tool and you'll get just the names of all of, the, all of the various things. And this capability extends to the VST instruments as well. So we'll jump back to home open our VST instruments tile. And here again, let me collapse everything. You can see that they're organized initially by category. That's the default. Um, we can change that again to vendor as well. And if we turn the, uh, let me go back to category. If we turn on the plugin pictures, again, you'll see here, some are blank and some are not. And if we take, um, let's go to one of the old school synths like Mystic. If, if you have not messed around with uh, Mystic, uh, Spectre, Prolog, and those go back to like version two in like 1989 or something. They've been around forever. Um, they're really stripped down. They're really basic, but they're they're cool. You can do a lot with them. And you know that all the old stuff is coming back again. So if you're looking for a, sort of a new sound or try to go a different direction, just try playing with some of those. So what I'm going to do is click on the, uh, the icon or rather the lack of an icon for Mystic. And I'm going to immediately see all of the Mystic uh, presets there. For whatever reason, it insists on giving you a QWERTY keyboard instead of a keyboard instead of a you know a piano keyboard for that. But if I take something, uh, pick one that sounds interesting, I can preview it down there. Okay, yeah, that's just what I need. I can click and drag that over into uh, my project window and drop it either in the project window or I can go into the track list, right? And if I uh, slide in between a couple of tracks, that line turns green, drop it, and I'm going to get uh, a version of Mystic with that patch loaded up. And couldn't be better. Now, the only thing that has changed on this since 1982 is there's now a, a, this camera icon next to the name of the preset. And if I hover over that, as you can see, it says, add that to the picture in the media rack. So if I come back over here into the media racks, you can see it happen. I go to VST Instruments. This is the, the icon for Mystic. When I click this camera, that's now gonna take the, it's gonna take this screenshot and bring it over. And if you, you know, if you have audio flowing through this or you've got different, you know, whatever's going on on screen at the moment that you click that, that's going to be your icon. So it's more of a look and feel thing that doesn't really change. It gives you a little more control over your visuals. And if you are a visually oriented learner, or visually oriented organizer, that's helpful. That's great. Uh, if you don't want to mess around with that, you can just disable the pictures and they'll go right back to the way it was. So let's go back to home and go into our VST effects again. And let's say uh, we'll look at another uh, drag and drop capability. I'm going to go back to category, open a uh, reverb, and let's say uh, Roomworks SE is the one that we want. I've got this plate reverb that I just can't live without. Um, I can now take that, drag it over, and drop it right onto... Uh, I should open the channel settings editor. We're going to get to this next. All right, and inserts. So... Uh, let me remove both of these so you can see the magic happen again. Unload that and unload this. 
what are we electric guitar power two all right so what we're looking at here is the channel settings editor for track 16 the e guitar power two i'm going to drag the bright plate reverb over and drop it onto that track in the track list and when i get its editor called back to the front you'll see that it dropped it into the first insert slot uh, you can do that same gag with uh, with a ton of stuff, whether it's uh, presets, uh, chains. We go back here if we wanted to um, take one of our presets, like a, a track preset for, um, uh, let's see, audio. You can drag this over into the track list, and it's going to create uh, a new audio track for us. And if we open the editor, we're going to see all of the all of the stuff that comes with that tree track preset is obviously already configured and i believe let's try this one more time if we take well we just picked on that guy let's go with our big bass mic track open the editor there's nothing for inserts there's nothing going on with the strip uh, if we take that same thing and drag it onto our existing bass mic track and let go we open the channel settings editor back up you can see all of those um channel track presets rather excuse me track preset uh items for alan master alan morgan 70s mastering 2 have been applied to a pre-existing track so you can do now you could you could do that before but you had to um, dig through a couple of menus here you can just pull it right over from the media tab and just makes it a little bit faster so that's fairly cool but not to be outdone let's go back home and then down to our loops and samples and i'm going to work with um the Colliding Worlds uh, sample set, just because it's got a lot of loops in it, you probably don't have, that's not included, that's one we had to go purchase separately. Uh, but if we go down to, um, let's see, let me sort them by favorites here, see if I can get something that I like. There we go. Take this loop, percussive loop. Now, when we get to the media bay and file handling in like the second half of the course, we'll we'll get into all of this stuff in a little more detail, but uh, something you've always been able to do is take the entire loop here, click and drag, bring it into your project, and if you drop it on an existing audio track, it's going to add that content to the track. Uh, if you drag it down into empty space here in the track list, right, it's going to create a new audio track with that in it. You know, it appeared at the cursor position. That's all old hat. What's new and actually really cool is you can now select a range within the previewer and then bring that over. So um, watch closely. I'm going to take the mouse down to the previewer and you'll notice it turns into a pencil. All right. And you can set your cursor position there. But if you hover just at the very top, you'll see uh, this gray line up here. And the only thing that's a little tricky to make this work, you've got to click and drag with the pencil in the gray line. Uh, but if you click and drag, you're going to define a range with what amount to a couple of locators, right? The white triangles, just like your project locators. Um, and now that, that now sets the focus for the previewer and you can drag those further for more granularity. So if we just went from say that downbeat, like that little break thing over to there. All right. Tweak him up just a little more. And once you have that set, now if you hover in the middle, it turns into a hand, you click and drag. And it's going to bring that up, and now it really the functionality here is like it like it has been. You can drop into an existing audio track, or you can take that range, and you can have it create a new audio track down there too. So that's one of those things you probably won't use that every day, but when you need it, it's really handy to be able to do it in one step instead of uh, bringing it in, cutting away what you don't need, and so forth and so on. So uh, uh, a lot of new ways to uh, you know to speed stuff up. Before we jump into the next one, though, I want to return to the um, our VST stuff for one more thing, because this is a good segue into the next one. If we're in our VST instruments or um, our VST effects, either one, and I open this uh, sort menu again, um, at the bottom of that is this option to open the plugin manager directly. And boom, there you go. Now, the plugin manager uh, will, again, we get to file handling, we'll talk about all the different, you know, the blacklist and what all of this stuff is and how to use it. But my point is that you can now get to the plugin manager right from the list of plugins. And that move is, that's a pretty fair representation of what a lot of the version 10 
tune-ups amount to. We'll see with side chaining, same thing. They now give you a shortcut key. So if you if you're looking at a side chain button, uh, you can boom, you can click right there and get all your side chain functionality up in front of you in one shot. You no longer have to remember. Oh, if I want this VST to move, I've got to go to media and then to VST manager and open that and then the blacklist. It's it's there's nothing new about the VST manager itself. It's just a heck of a lot easier to get to. And that sort of uh, workflow enhancement is you see this over and over and over again in version 10. So that's why one of the reasons I think it's really cool. And it's the sort of thing if if you don't touch that stuff every day, it can be really frustrating uh, to like, I know, I know how to do this, but it's been a year since I had to mess with my VST manager. So I, I think it'll cut down on the number of emails and calls to the help desk with people going, I'm lost or whatever. It may, may cut into our tutorial business a little bit, but it makes the whole thing a lot easier to use. So don't want to belabor that anymore. That's a, a sort of a soup to nuts on the new media tab enhancements. So let's uh, leave this and bounce over to the new add track dialog in just a second.